Dan Perry here with another C++ tutorial for Dan on Tech. In this video we'll continue looking at math functions and in a previous video we looked at uh, the math library, adding the math library and we looked at the power function. In this video we're going to look at uh, the absolute value and square root functions and if you remember the absolute value is the positive number or positive version of any number. So the absolute value of say 3 would be 3. The absolute value of minus 3 would be 3. You Basically it's the positive value of any number. Now the absolute value function can work on a uh, variable or it could work on an, a constant, a number. So let's do that and uh, look at this, and I'm going to do the same as I've done before. I'm just going to output that value in a Cout statement, and the function for absolute value is ABS, short for absolute value, and then you've got parentheses, and you put your variable in parentheses. So let me first do the absolute value of Y, and if we see up here Y is 3.5, so it should give us the same value or same number for the absolute value. And maybe let's also do the absolute value of z, which shows as a minus 3.4. So that should give us a 3.4. And let's also look at doing an integer. So I've got an integer i, and we'll look at that one and now when we run this and it builds, you can see that we've gone in and we've gotten a 3.4 for the absolute value of y, well, or 3.5 rather. Then z is 3.4, well z was a negative 3.4, so the absolute value of it would be the positive. Well, nothing changed with the i, it's 6 and it was a positive 6 before. Let me do one more absolute value, and for this one, let me say minus 12. So let's do the absolute value of a number, and so I'll put absolute value of minus 12 to show that we can run the function that way. And when we run it, it shows then the absolute value of minus 12 now is the 12. Okay, so that's our absolute value function. Anytime you need the positive value, that's one that function you can use. Now that would be an easy one to build a subroutine or a uh, using an if statement to uh, evaluate. <clears throat> But let's look at something that would be a little bit harder to build your own subroutine for, and that is the square root function. Well, if you remember, the square root of the number is the number that multiplied by itself would give you that number. So the square root of 4 is 2, because 2 times 2 is 4. That's a little bit harder for us to mathematically calculate. I know back when I was in high school, we had to learn how to do the square roots longhand. Uh, then we were uh, given the luxury of being able to do square roots on a slide rule. Well, with the square root function, we will say, let's do the square root of, say, y. It's SQRT and then in parentheses your variable, sqrt, and then in parentheses your variable. So I can do the square root of y, and right now y has a value of 3.5. Um, let's also do a um, square root of a number, we can do a number. Now, since we're using Microsoft Visual Studio for this, I am restricted that it has to be a floating point or a double. It can't be an integer. So 9.0, I'll get an error if I try to compile it with an integer value there. And so we've got here the square root of 9.0. So let's run this. 
and it has calculated now the square root of y, 1.87. Well, let's see. I know the square root of 4 would be 2, so it's got to be less than that. That looks about right to me. Now, when it did, I did the square root of 9, well, I knew that was a 3, so we do see a 3 as the result for it. Now, square roots can only be done on positive numbers. Square roots can only be done on positive numbers. So I'm going to show you what will happen if you try to do the square root of a negative number. And so if I do the square root of, say, negative 9, and I could have done, actually, let's do the square root of z, because z up here is a negative 3.4. And when I run it, now it ran. It didn't give me a, any error compiling. Well, there's no syntax error. The sentence structure of the syntax is, a, is correct. When it compiled it, it didn't know what the value of z would be at that time. Yes, we've said it, but maybe z was calculated or z was entered by a user. And now when we try to do the square root of a negative number, we get an error. Well, this error is a funny looking value, minus one dot pound IND. Not sure why they use an IND, uh, but uh, this indicates this is an undefined number, uh, an error. So anytime you see that, you're doing a math operation, and there are other functions that will give you this. You're doing a math operation that could not properly be calculated. So it's very obvious in the output that you have an error. So just be aware that when you, we do square roots, it has to be on a positive number. Well, what if I wanted the square root or want to mix functions? I actually can nest functions together. And so if I want the square root of the absolute value of z, so the, uh, the, the positive value of z, I could actually do that by inside my square root, do the absolute value function, and then use z. And remember, I have to have as many open parentheses as closed, so when I start nesting, make sure you don't miss any open and close parentheses. I've got two open and two close. Uh, Mixing or nesting functions inside of functions are perfectly valid and will often be done. It's just like with a math operation, you can do that. And now when I nest that together, I get a z, uh, uh, or the square root of the absolute value of 1.84. Well, just like with other math operations, it does what's inside the parentheses first. So it will do the absolute value because it's inside the square root function. It will do the absolute value before it does the square root, giving us that positive number that allows us now to calculate or to get a, a valid square root. Thank you for watching this Dan on Tech video. Please subscribe to this playlist so you don't miss future videos. Please check out and subscribe to our other Dan on Tech channel playlists.